This video is for the beginners that are interested in or have purchased the bulk publishing system. When I first started, I wasn't aware that it might not be beginner friendly because it's something I'm, I've am i been playing around with and I'm used to now. So I didn't think that talking about things like concatenate and having all of these rows would be intimidating but that's just me trying to cater to everybody which I'm trying to do less now because the bulk publishing framework was about introducing the system which is the tool so I could show people how to use it or how I'm using it as I play around with the tool more I'm learning more new use cases and then I share that on Twitter or within the group and then it starts to seem more complicated than it is but for somebody who is a beginner who is just trying to add some content to their blog or maybe get a few blogs started with some MVP first drafts thrown up as soon as possible looking at the sheet and thinking okay I have to find a way to fill all of that stuff out is very very intimidating. So I just wanted to show you, of course, utilizing the fact that you can do all of these things within the sheet before it even gets to your site, before you start to do on-page SEO and you start to format it further and add your images. Utilizing as much as you can in the sheet is one of my favorite things about the method. It's something that it's the reason I developed it because you can do so much in a sheet, it's things I didn't know you could do. But I also want to show how simple it is to actually just generate your first draft from just the keyword. When you go to the first draft generator, once you paste a list of keywords in the keyword row, it's going to automatically generate your slug. That's the only thing you really need. It's going to automatically generate a few of the titles with the CTR, the prompt for these titles has been made to generate enticing titles. So they should have a CTR element to them. And I've designed it so it's got the main keyword in the beginning, and then it's got sort of a modifier at the end. So you've kept the keyword in the title and it's not tried to just form its own title based on the keyword. We want to keep it in, in the title. It's just, it's, it just keeps things simple. So the first thing it's going to do, which is a GPT formula, is get title. You can turn this off. You don't need it to get the title to create your first draft. All you need is your keyword, if that's what you want to do. If you, if you have a list of keywords and you want to generate all your articles based on the keyword, you can do that. As we start to add more data is when it gets more complicated, but also that's when we get better outputs. So when I talk about the prompt data cell and putting it all together so we can use that to create the first draft, this first draft, as you can see, is created from B2, which is the keyword cell. So the quality is significantly better when we use the prompt data cell. So when we get it to drag the meta description, the title, additional keywords, the brief, all of those things make it better, but they also do increase the chances of getting errors back. And errors are very, very common these days as OpenAI figure out what they're doing with their server and how they're allocating priority and chat GPT and I guess just trying to catch up with everything. So there are a lot of outages and it seems like it's affecting the API a lot more and we're getting more errors, but there are things we can do to reduce those errors. And when it comes to things like generating titles and very, very short things, meta descriptions, you're not really going to get errors with those things. You'll probably get a rate limit if you try and do over 60 in the minute. So if you click and drag all the way down to 100 keywords, you'll start to get a rate limit error because you're limited to 60 calls to the API within the minute. I think that can be adjusted. I think you can request to have it adjusted. You've got to give them a reason why and it fill out a sheet. But in any case, what I'm trying to get at is that 
you just need, I'd say, I'd say for a very, very basic output, it's good to have the title, but you just need the keyword. It's going to generate an article from the keyword alone. But one of the issues I'm working through at the moment is something that's very common with AI when you tell it to do something like create an entire blog post is it does these what is the thing titles and I really really hate that the person searching for can AI animate clearly knows what animation is so that's a waste of tokens every time it does that so I need to go in with my prompt engineer spanner and hammer and try and get it to stop doing that and I'm going to keep playing around with it and in the end I'm going to add a new default formula for generating articles so it's a lot of work going into trying to get the best prompt so it's one size fits all for a first draft rather than you going in I mean going in in the back end and crafting your perfect prompt to generate an, an article is, is the better way but again trying to simplify this for beginners and then allowing everybody else who's more experienced with Google Sheets to just play around with it is ideal for me and it will reduce the amount of confusion when you first open the sheet. So back to the first draft generator. This is a new prompt I've been working on because I prefer to have a separate introduction and tell the prompt not to generate an introduction. It doesn't do well with introductions. I feel like AI introductions that are not crafted well or the prompt is not crafted specifically for the introduction is not great. They, they become very generic, very repetitive, and I can sort of tell when it's an AI introduction. So I've been working on a new default prompt for introductions and I've actually included some of the points that Jamie IF uses in his Spear framework. If you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description below. But not only can you direct it with the tone that you want it to produce, which is something I'm very, very big on, the tone and really guiding it on the cadence and the rhythm, very, very important when writing a prompt. But you can also direct it and give it a format so the spear framework is very, very useful. And there are a bunch of things it considers. So I want you to go and check that article out, but I'll just tell you what the spear stands for. And that's search or user intent, pain points, expertise, audience, and rapport. So these are things that you want to have in a good introduction that really encompasses everything you want it to, to draw the reader in, let the reader know that the article is for them and what they're going to gain from the article. And I really feel that a good introduction sets the tone. So still working on this, but I thought it was a good thing to try and incorporate into a new formula. And that is the get intro formula. I'm still getting some repetition because it's starting a few of them, let's see, it's done. Are you curious about what artificial intelligence AI can do when it comes to animation? Have you been wanting to learn more about how AI can use animation but unsure where to start? I understand how daunting the topic can seem, but don't worry, with this article, I'm here to help you get a comprehensive understanding of what AI animation is and its potential. We'll explore the history of AI animation, how it works and the applications of AI in animation today. Together, we'll go through some of the most successful and innovative examples of, of AI animation. By the end of this article, you'll have gained enough knowledge and insight to know if AI animation is for you. So let's get started on this exciting journey. Definitely not bad. Definitely not bad. But as I said, I've clicked and I've dragged and it started again with, are you curious about um, and that might be a problem, of course, if everybody is using the get intro formula and then it, everything starts with, are you curious about? Then it starts to develop an AI feel and that's exactly what we don't want. So let me, um, let me actually click and drag a few more. This is generating introductions from just the keyword. So, or was it, no, it's generating them from the, the title. 
So they all start with are you. So again, I'm going to tweak this a bit before I, I release this new um, formula. But this is just to let you guys know that you can do things your own way. So you can have the first draft generate the entire article for you. Sit for this one, let me let me just um, save these values so we can go into it. So for this one, it's done its introduction because it's got the H1 here. So we wouldn't we wouldn't leave that there. But in the age of technology, many people are beginning to ask if artificial intelligence, AI, something I don't like it, it always does that. So I usually do a find and replace and just replace this with the abbreviation because I've noticed AI always does it. Granted, it only does it for the first time it mentions it, but I don't like it. I know it does it. Anything that feels generic or something I, I've noticed as a pattern in AI, I try to take those away immediately. But um, beginning to ask if AI can truly create art, is it possible for machines to produce something that reflects human emotion? This is actually really good already um, with advancements in AI continuing to rise. Some individuals may wonder if art can ever be stopped. This That's really good. That's really good. I'm going to attribute that to good prompt writing, you know, so it's <laughs> But um, that's not bad, especially if you if um, this is not working as intended just yet. It does a good job, but this got it got straight to the point. Um, have you been wanting to explore AI but don't know where to be? Yeah, include a potential use production, how AI art can be sold. Oh, that's a good one. Gev will dive into the world of AI art and take. I think they use that together. I say they. I think it's used, yeah, together will, yeah. I'm going to need to add some more variety to the prompt so it's not just learning from that one example. So that's all that is, just giving it some more variety. I'm writing them myself so then it has this human writer that it can learn from rather than putting it back in on itself. So letting it generate an introduction and using that as the prompt. I'm trying my best to write my best introduction for it to learn from. So that's where we get into fine tuning and, and, and training the AI. But as I was saying, you can just take your keyword or your title and let it generate a first draft from that. Um, it looks like, again, the more information we give it, the more errors we get. But the issue is when it's just generating from the keyword, it, it has very little direction and that often results in more cleanup on your end. So we have to clean up. We have to clean this up. We have to take away the H1 and things like that. Because when we go and put them in, in WP all import, we're going to, it doesn't need the H1. It doesn't need all of this HTML and it needs the H2s and the H3s and the lists, but it doesn't need your heading to be in the body. So we just want the body to be the body. In this one, it's, um, it's done the same thing. We could just remove the H2 and let that be the introduction without the what is thing. But as you can see, it does require some more uh, cleanup than it would do if it has a prompt data cell filled in directing it where it needs to go. So on the back end, your custom prompt is going to say exactly what you want it to do with the data. So. Use this keyword to create an entire blog post on the subject. Include an introduction, no conclusion. Create six subheadings. Put these subheadings onto a new line and write three long-form detailed paragraphs about each subheading in a creative tone. No repetition. Mix up the rhythm and write in a unique stylistic tone. No detectable language patterns. So you're just you're just telling it and hoping hoping it follows the instructions. On the other one, I was telling it to include H2 tags. That makes it a lot easier on the front end, especially when it comes to publishing right away rather than sending them to draft. If you prefer to send them to draft and then have your virtual assistant or you're planning on editing it before publishing, then having H2s and H3s doesn't matter too much. You just want to get the data, of course, plus having these tags is going to reduce your tokens because they're going to be used 
to add HTML. So that's something to consider. But in any case, very, very simple. This one resulted in an error. So I'm going to try and get it to do this again. We're using B7, which is the keyword field. We're going to try and get it to generate the article based on the keyword and hope there are no errors. I'm also going to do this one while we wait. Somebody did suggest that when it presents an error, I can probably add a loop so it keeps going until it gives you what you're asking for. So if it does generate an error, it's not, it doesn't take your credits, but it will keep looping until it gives you an output, which is a very, very good idea. But in this case, it didn't give any problems. What it did do is give me an introduction and I asked it not to, but it's fine. It's, it's not the end of the world. Um, let's generate some more. And then I can just show you the click and drag. So in on the on the left, we've got all of our key, our keywords. We've got probably about how many? I've got 55, 50, 54. And you've got 54 keywords. That's 54 articles. And you can just click and drag and generate your first drafts. And if you get errors, you just do it again. So click and drag. But again, 60 minimum in a minute and then do it again. So it's not not holding you back that much. 60 articles in a minute is not a bad, it's not a bad amount of articles you can do in a minute. Starting to it's starting to generate these. They're gonna take different times depending on how much is required of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do some in-sheet editing and then I'm going to upload these onto bulkpublishing.ai so I can actually show the output. But I am going to do some editing just so they aren't going up completely rough and I that's how I, I recommend publishing things in any case. So the subheadings are all going to be H2s. I'm going to add uh, search and replace after the period so I can put a break so that the sentences are spaced out. Again, I hate walls of text and it just makes it easier to read. So these are things that I, I do with all of my sites when I'm in the sheet rather than doing it all on the front end. But there are still quite a few things that we do on the front end when we're adding images, we're perfecting things, we're fact checking, we're just improving things all around. But I, again, I still want to make sure that my first draft and the MVP I put up is decent enough to be picked up by Google and be indexed.